I'm not going to do the normal monthly presentation tonight because we do have the five-year forecast on the agenda, and I want to go over that and hit some highlights of some things in the forecast for you. Okay. Um, one thing, there's a lot of changes that are coming down the pipe um, for, for forecasting in the next couple of years um, with the new governor and the new biennial budget. Um, one of those being um, there's obviously going to be a loss of revenue from the Ohio Department of Education. Um, we're losing 271000 in um, stimulus money uh, that's been accounted for within this forecast. Um, we're also going to be losing special ed stimulus money that was designated for special education. Um, that's not general fund revenues, but because we've been supplementing our general fund with those stimulus monies for the last couple of years that are special ed, then we might see an increase, we'll probably see an increase in, in expenses next year as some of those expenses come back into our general fund. Uh, we're going to be losing tangible personal property tax reimbursement. That's uh, a new phase out schedule with this new proposed biennial budget. Um, so that'll be a loss of 378000 next year. Um, and then I've also included the increase in open enrollment. We've estimated about an additional half a million dollars will be coming into the district as a result of opening up open enrollment in grades one through eight. So that's included in the forecast for next year and the years on out. Um, with the changes um, that are being proposed by VCHIP, we're being told that the insurance rates for this year should only go up about 9 or 10 percent. So I've included a 10 percent uh, increase in rates for next year. Um, after that, I've included, included a 15 percent rate raise going on out. So um, I don't think that they're going to be able to hold it to the 9 or 10 percent range after this coming year. Um, Health care costs are just going up too much. Um, so I'm being kind of proactive on that and I'm forecasting a 15 percent in years 13, 14, and 15 as part of this forecast. Um, I've also included the new salary index that you guys will be voting on tonight as part of the MEA negotiations. That is a savings to us of approximately 90000 a year. So I've included that. Um, so if you don't approve the contract tonight, I'll have to redo my forecast. Um, and then I've also included the Rockies Express based on the current um, information that we have with Rockies Express, which is coming in through general fund property tax revenues and then being transferred out into the permanent improvement fund. Um, so those are all the things that are changing in the next year or two that needed to be considered in this forecast, and there's a lot to it. Um, I talked about the loss in funding from the Ohio Department of Education. We know that for this coming year, for 2011 and 2012, they're going to have a transitional funding formula that will be in place for next year that will be giving us those funds through the same formula process but on a transitional basis. They're also going to be creating a brand new formula throughout the year next year. And we don't know what that will look like. So as I get information um, from the ODE throughout the next school year, as that um, development process goes, I will keep you guys updated on what it potentially looks like that new funding formula will look like. Okay, so for revenues, I think for this year we're going to come in at right at $18.6 million. For next year, I think we're going to be at $18.7, not a big increase despite the increase in open enrollment. Um, and property tax revenues because of the um, Rockies Express and substitute levy um, because of the other losses that are listed that you have on the first slide. Um, I think um, the Rockies Express, we got 567000 in this year, so for next year I assume that will be twice that, be a fall payment and a spring payment. Now I will caution that to say that Rockies Express is still fighting their values of the Department of Taxation. Um, I'm hopeful because Duke lost their appeal. Uh, their first appeal, I've, heard, I've been told that they're going to reappeal it to a higher level. Um, so I'm hopeful that they will not lose value at the Department of Taxation, but that is a caveat with this. This is based on what I know today. It's kind of like a weather forecast. You know, when you guys came in, it was sunny outside, but before we were <laughs> within half an hour of the meeting, we had to go take cover. So forecasts can change just like the weather can change. So keep that in mind as you go on. These numbers are not any more concrete than tonight. They could all change tomorrow, and if they do, then I'll re-update the forecast, and we'll look at it again when that happens. Um, like I said, I've included the loss of stimulus money, and I did keep in, we do still have half of the ed jobs money, and that is in there um, in the restricted line item in your revenue, so that is still in there for next year. The ed jobs and the race to the top is the only restricted funding that's in there for the next three years. And that's just uh, gives you a graphic view of how our revenues break up. Um, graphically, about 40, 46% of all of our revenues that come in are directly related to property taxes and real estate here in Monroe. Um, so that's a big chunk of change. 
Um, the personal, tangible personal property tax, that has been going down. We know that that tax is done. The reimbursements are the tax, the property tax allocation, and that's going to be phased out um, after next year. Um, and then you can see down here this unrestricted grants and aid, that's our OBE payments. Those are our foundation payments, and that's about a quarter of our total revenue. So I'm really anxious to see what they do with the funding formula for next year. Okay, um, for expenses, give you some details on the expenses that are included in the forecast. I think for this year we're going to come in at 18.2 million in expenses. For next year it's 17 million. We've included the budget cuts of $804,000. Those were personnel cuts that were made earlier in this year that you guys have already approved. Um, that includes moving some of those debt payments out to PI, which is in line with the resolution that was passed last month. Um, it also includes that increase in some special education account costs to account for that loss of stimulus funding from special ed. And it includes transferring out that Rockies Express. Because Rockies Express is property tax based, it has to come in in the general fund revenues and then be transferred out to PI. And this is what our expenses look like. So you can see right there that our salaries make up about 55% and our benefits and insurance is about 80, 18%. So salaries and benefits overall are right at the 72, 73% range. Purchase services is 20%. That's a little higher than other districts because we contract out busing um, and we contract out uh, several other things, technology, uh, maintenance of our yards, of our lawn care and, and snow removal. If those were internal positions, then our personnel costs and, and benefits would be higher and our purchase services would be lower. But because of those contracted, the way ours breaks up graphically is purchase services about 20%. And the others, you can see those are minor pieces of our budget overall, but those are the big things that we look at on a day-to-day -day basis. Supplies and materials, capital outlay, that's our technology, our textbooks, all of our um, supplies that our teachers, not the stuff that the student fees are paying for, but stuff that our teachers are using, papers, etc. I don't like the thunder, so we're going to get going. Um, you have the forecast uh, that was given to you last week, so you have a much more close-up and detailed version of this. Um, I won't go over that. It's really hard to show those details on a slide. Um, but just to give you where we are ending-wise, for this year, I think we're going to come in with an ending balance of almost 250000 For next year, because of the cuts that we're making and because of the increase in open enrollment, I think that's going to be closer to a million. Not quite, but I think we're going to get close to a million. Um, and that's, dude, I already said that. The following year, I think we're going to start dropping back down. I've held state funding static. I don't know what's going to happen with that new funding formula, but for now I've just held it static in years 13, 14, and 15. I'd really like to say I'd like to see that increase back to our, our levels that we're at now. Right now we're a little over $5 million. Next year we're going to be in between $4.7 and $4.8 million. So I'd really like to say, okay, in 13 and 14, I think we're going to go back to our $5 million level, but I can't say that right now, so I'm going with what I know. Um, and then on out, as you can see, as with any forecast for the school districts, we're all projecting negatives on out past 14. Um, that's not really a healthy balance, but, you know, we're doing things, we're making cuts, and we're, we're getting our revenues up so that we don't have to. Any questions about that? I, I want to start with the cuts that we had. Okay. Can I go back to that first slide? It's like roughly a million dollars or just over a million dollars in cuts in the state. Yes. If my math is right. Yes. Over the next two years, yes. Anything on there that you were not expecting, like that we had heard in the last couple of months maybe that has changed? I was not expecting the loss of stimulus revenue. I've been talking about this whole year and saying, you know, they're saying we're not going to lose that. That when for next year we're going to, you know, they're going to go back to their regular. And I said I'm not 100% convinced that's going to happen. And I was right. We lost the stimulus completely. They did not replace that in our payments. Um, we knew that we were losing tangible personal property tax, but the reimbursement that allocation was supposed to have gone out for us through 15. With the new um, budget that the governor's proposed, that's actually going to end in 13 now for us. Um, we'll get a payment next year, but then we won't get anything in 13. We're going to get like $40,000 that year. Um, so it's ending three years sooner than I thought it was. Um, other than that, um, I knew insurance was going up. I've been projecting 10 to 15 percent over the last several years in the forecast. Um, I that's think like that's, that's $378,000 difference in our general fund. Yeah. 
Yeah, some of it, I, like I said, I was not expecting some of those to take effect so quickly, but the new governor's biennial budget changed a lot of things. Um, there are districts that, prior to the House getting hold of it, were going to lose 100% of their funding formula, their funding foundation funding. Now they've capped it at 20%, but everybody's getting a cut. The state of Ohio has to clean up an $8 billion hole somewhere, and that's being passed on the schools. 